Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with Abel Cine in Burbank, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Miller CX fluid heads, so let's get started. So for me, my introduction to Miller really was back in the sort of whole DSLR craze. I was looking for a relatively lightweight, reliable, uh, well-performing fluid head that I could use with things like the 5D Mark II and I wound up finding the Miller DS10, which is still a product you can get today, two stages uh, of counterbalance. And for me, really, it was just sort of the drag and the way that that head performed that I really loved for that type of production. And I continued to use it along with cameras like the C100 and the C100 Mark II. Nowadays, we're all over the place. We're using small mirrorless cameras like this, the A7 series. We've got these small cameras like this, many of them one chip cameras from companies like Canon and Sony. And then also other form factors besides what we're seeing here like this C200 in a cage and also that uh, Alexa back there, um, like this, this XC15. So we've got lots of sizes and shapes and form factors that we're using with our fluid heads. And that means that we wanna pick something that's gonna allow us to use lots of different form factors on them. And that's kind of where the Compass X comes in. It's really an evolution of the Compass line, and there are five heads in the series. We have the CX2, the 6, the 8, the 10, and the 18. So let's talk about the similarities and the differences between each of the heads. The 2, 6, and 8, they're all based on a 75 millimeter bowl. The 10 and the 18 have 100 millimeter bowls, so the one over my left shoulder over there with the Alexa, that is the CX-18. And the main differences besides that is really sort of their weight range in terms of weight capacity that they can take and also the levels of drag that they have. What's really nice about all of them though is that they can all start at zero across the boards in terms of counterbalance and also in terms of drag. The CX-2 has a top weight capacity of about 17 and a half pounds. So you can start again at zero and then go up to about 17 and a half pounds. And then the six and the eight top out at about 26 and a half pounds in terms of total weight. But regardless of the fluid head that you use, that total weight isn't always the whole picture. Sure, when we're balancing a camera on a fluid head, we're trying to find the center of gravity and basically put that down the center of the fluid head. But there's also the height of the camera itself. And sometimes we'll even have situations where we're on a plate and the camera is sitting much higher than the plate. It might be on a dovetail, so it's raised up. And that does have a big impact in terms of your overall center of gravity and also the total weight capacity that that fluid head can hold. Not really hold, but balance. And that's what we're always trying to do on a fluid head is balance our camera system. So while I'm telling you what the top weight capacities are, and the fact that those are quite high, sometimes depending on your camera configuration, that could be different. Now the CX-10 and the 18, the 10 has again a top weight capacity of about 26 and a half pounds. It's a slightly heavier head than those 75 millimeter bowl systems. And then the 18, the largest and the one that has the highest capacity, tops out at about 35 pounds. So those are some of the specs on the actual heads themselves that have to do with overall weight capacities. And of course, that means that we can use, again, smaller camera systems and then also larger camera systems with these fluid heads. Now we talk about drag. The two and the six have three levels of drag for the pan and the tilt. And then when we get into the 8, the 10, and the 18, they all have five levels that you can actually dial in for your drag. So a little more granular, a little more control in terms of the drag that you have for your camera system. And then there are a lot of similarities between all of these heads. And the biggest one here, which is the same across the boards, is the counterbalance system. 
They're calling it CB Plus or Counterbalance Plus. And there are 16 steps that are available to you when you're using the counterbalance, which is one of the reasons why you can use all of these different sizes and form factors for your cameras. This is the CX-8 that I have here. And let me just go ahead and show you how I would approach actually taking a camera system and actually balancing it on a head like this. And then again, show you some of the features that are the same on all of the CX models. So let me just go ahead and pan the camera over here. Uh, first thing to do, and I'm just gonna hold the handle here, is I'm just gonna go ahead and release that head. There is a safety here. There's your safety and you will see that that is a side mount. That is the same on all of the CX fluid heads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that back in and you'll see that pop in. You'll hear that click, so that safety is now in place and then I can just go ahead and lock that into place. It's of course a sliding plate here, so you're getting pretty good travel in terms of how far you can move that camera forward and backwards. And additionally, just a nice little touch. Let me just go ahead and release this again so you can see this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and release and I'm gonna tilt this for you. So let me just release the tilt handle. You will see built into the head here, there are taps for quarter 20 and also 3816 plate screws. So that's really nice overall. So I'm just gonna lock that tilt head again. And then what we're doing here usually is we're trying to, and if you have a handle, it's much easier, trying to find where about the center of gravity is for your camera system based on its configuration. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop that in to the head here, and you're gonna line that up pretty much with, again, the center of the fluid head. So I'm gonna eyeball that just a little bit, and then I'm gonna lock that down. Okay, and you can see that. And what I can do here, as long as I'm spotting it here, and I just wanna show that to you, let me just pan this around here, is I'm gonna hold the handle here and I'm going to turn this dial for my counterbalance. And you see, again, there's CB for counterbalance and then counterbalance plus. Let me show you how this works. So if I'm on CB, I can go all the way down to zero in terms of my counterbalance. So in order to see that, I'm gonna go ahead and take my tilt drag all the way down to zero as well. I have to hold it here. We don't wanna lose that camera or damage it. And you can see here that right now, I'm just eyeballing it here based on where I was. I was pretty spot on in terms of where that was. And you can see here that I'm pretty much balanced, okay? So I'm gonna leave my drag off now for my tilt. And I'm also going to now dial up my counterbalance. And you can see I'm here on the CB. Move it back and forth for those springs to actually activate. Dial it all the way up to 14. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start to see how well balanced that camera is. It's a little too much counterbalance right now. The springs are working a little too hard and you can see that I get that kickback or that bounce back. So I'm gonna dial that back now. Let's see, we're gonna, and when we're in CB here, it's doing it as basically zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. So we basically get eight steps there. So now I'm set to 12, as you can see right there. So I'm on 12, let's see how that is. So getting better. That's actually feeling pretty good. So mm, I might have to just make a little bit of an adjustment here. So I'm gonna loosen this up, just pull it back just a little bit in terms of the plate, tighten that up again. And that's feeling pretty good. And then basically the way it works is if you're still getting a little bit of movement there, what you can do is you can start to dial in between steps here. I'll flip this up to CB plus and it's activating another small spring here and now I was set to 12 before, it's moving it to 13. And we can see how 13 is. Might still be a little bit much here. Okay, let's see, still getting a little bit of bounce. Let's go down here to 11 and see if that's any better. So there's 11, not quite enough. So for me, I'm actually gonna switch back to CB here 
and I'm going to put it back to 12 because I felt like at 12 I was getting a balanced head overall. That feels good. Okay, good. And then as soon as you basically have it balanced, what you can do is then you can activate your drag. So I'll take my tilt drag here. And again, on the CX-8, I have five steps here of drag. On the two and the six, you would have three levels. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'll just dial in right now. Let's just say a drag of two. And there's my pan. You can see here that's a drag of five. So tremendous amount of drag. So there's zero. So we can have zero on our pan. Let's just dial that into two as well. So as you can see now, there's no kickback here in terms of when I'm panning and when I'm tilting. And very, very smooth overall. And that's pretty much the whole process. Did the same thing over there with the Alexa on the CX-18. Again, has a larger bowl and a larger total weight capacity, but the functionality of the head is exactly the same. So there you have it. That's the CX-2 through the CX-18 from Miller. Lots of similarities between all of the heads. The big differences are the number of levels of drag, three or five, and then also the weight capacity. The other big difference is the bowl size. You've got three in the line with a 75 millimeter bowl and then two with the 100 millimeter bowl. The 8 with a 75 millimeter bowl and the 10 with the 100 millimeter bowl are essentially the same except for that bowl size in terms of the specs. So you would pick one or the other depending on the support equipment that you were using based on that bowl size. Of course, you match it with the tripod that best suits your type of production. Mid-level spreaders, there are bottom level spreaders and then also the solo sticks from Miller that you can use. They make them in aluminum, they make them in carbon fiber, so you choose what makes the most sense for what you're doing. I'm excited about this CX-8 especially because I like the fact that I can use it with all of those cameras that I was showing you, and I can kit out and put together a slightly bigger compact digital cinema camera, which is sort of where I'm living in small to no crew production. But of course, if you're moving up to ENG style camera systems, things like also an Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K, which is a hefty little camera, then you might want to take a look at something like that CX-18. Again, functionality wise, exactly the same, but a slightly larger weight capacity and it has that 100 millimeter bowl. So there you go. That's the Miller CX series. Thanks for watching.